Um, I was just finishing and trying to ask a few questions of my guests at the end, and I'm going to ask you this one. If you could pick up a, a phone and uh, call up the 20-year-old Richard Dawkins and uh, give that young man some advice, I guess you would be at college at this point. Um, where, were you, where were you at 20? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, but if you could say something to him, a piece of advice, what, what would you say? What was that 20-year-old Richard like? I think I would say, um, well, don't make the mistakes I made. Well, that's obvious. Um, what mistakes did you well, make? Well, then I thought you were going to ask that, and, I, and, and <laughs> it's hard for me to say. I mean, I think um, be, be more confident than I was. Um, be, believe in yourself more. It, it took me a while to be confident enough to say what I thought. Uh, I thought I, I, my 18-year-old self certainly just thought that I had to say what, other, what I'd been taught. Mm -hmm. and, and I think soon you realize that um, you should have some confidence in developing your own, I wouldn't want to say opinion, but your own um, abilities, um, believe, believe in yourself. But I, I, I hate the question, the question about what advice would I give? Um, I actually w once um, was taking part in a, a television documentary, presenting a television documentary, in which one part of the ideas was how, what I would say to my a clone of me, who, who, who would be born a thousand years hence. They, the idea was to take my my genome, sequence it, put it on a disc, and bury it for a thousand years, and then. And then in the te television fantasies, somebody would dig it up in a thousand years, build a clone of me, and what, what would I say to him? Um, and it was, it was a similar question. Yeah, you I, have I nothing don't, to I say don't, to I don't like the question. Yeah, it's a strange question. I'm trying to think if you, uh, you know, were recreate a thousand years from now, and then all of a sudden you saw yourself giving you advice. I mean, I'm sure you'd just turn yourself well, I, off. Well, rather more he <laughs> gave advice to me in the, the light of what is known, of course. I mean, that, um, by, by then, in a thousand years' time, they'll know so much more. I would be fascinated to listen to hear what he had to say. And how old were you until you became confident? Was it like 27, 28, 30? Oh, no, not really until... No, but may maybe about then, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, just on that same note, best advice you ever received could have come from a professor or your dad or somebody in writing or anything? Does it stick out as something that said, someone said to you that... That was profound or helped you in in your career. I wouldn't say advice. No, I mean no. I mean I've, I've learned a huge amount from books and from professors and people. But but it's more about science and not about not about, as it were, self help type advice. Yeah. Okay. And then I guess the last part of that is there's a 20 year old right now that's watching us or listening to us from all different parts of the world. Uh, growing up in a world today of technology or free speech being questioned or all of these things like that. What, what, what do you think is important for them to pay attention to? Evidence. Um, evidence is more important than opinions. Um, don't believe anything unless there's evidence for it. And never, never believe what somebody tells you as a result of their personal opinion um, or what's said in some book or other or, or tradition. Um, al always seek for the, for the actual evidence for, for, for it. Um, importance of free speech, which we just talked about that. Uh, don't be too scared to, don't, I mean, be, be adventurous, be, be, be prepared to take risks. I don't mean physical risks with your, with your life, but, but, but risks of hearing things that, that, you, that you might find distasteful. Um, don't cost it yourself. Free speech is an interesting one because if you're really practicing freedom of speech, you have to be willing to listen to something that you disagree with. Precisely. Yeah. Yes. It's Especially so at university, which is just where that should be going. Yeah. It's so important to get comfortable being uncomfortable when someone says something that challenges you or, yes. or bothers you. Or, or, or a counterfactual, a hypothetical possibility. Yeah. I, imagine that it were true that something which isn't true, but suppose it were, what would that? What would be the consequences of that? There are some people who just can't handle that right. because won't even entertain it. Just yes. close it down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Richard, I've had so many guests on this show that when they sat in that chair, I thought they were out of their minds. And three years later, I I was believing in 70, 80 percent of what they said. Uh huh. 
And, yes. and when I, and this happened repeatedly, repeatedly, and it just shows me how uh, close-minded I am or how my initial reaction to a new idea is one of aversion. But when I give it time, I find out that I'm actually changing uh -huh. oftentimes. Yes. Yeah. And so even if I'm aware of it, sometimes I still have to convince myself to stay open to it because I know it'll turn me into a more evolved person. Yeah, interesting, yes. If I can be open yeah. to those ideas. Yes. So, and so that's why we have these conversations, mm. uh, is to where people can hear a nuanced mm -hmm. point of view that you can't mm -hmm. get in, say, one message or one meme. And so, uh, yeah, so I've really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, me too. Um, the book is Flights of Fancy. It's a beautiful book, um, ages eight to 80. I'm gonna take uh, my printed copy home to my boys, five and six, and I'm gonna read it to them, and they're gonna love the images. Good. And it's gonna get them fascinated about flight. And I'm telling you, these boys know the name of every animal in the zoo. Um, oh, that's terrific. You know, I'm from San Diego, California, where we have a SeaWorld, and uh, one time I, there was like uh, a killer whale. I said, this is a killer whale, and my son was five, and he said, that's an orca. Oh, <laughs> very good. Yeah, <laughs> yes. corrected me. Yes. Yes. So they know all the dinosaurs, yeah, they know everything, yeah. so they're gonna yes. love this book yeah. as well. So. Good. Thank you for all of your great work and thank you for continuing to write and please come back when the next book is ready. Thank you very much indeed. All right, very much appreciate you, sir. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, all right, good. Thank you, everybody. Take care. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who wanna join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year is going to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. So let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?